This video is for beginner preppers all the way up to expert preppers, and it's only a few minutes, guys. This is really good information on this video, stuff we can always check back on to make sure we're doing what we need to. So take notes. Let's go through five different things that are the real essentials you need to look out for, especially if you're a beginner when it comes to preparedness. Number one, of course, food and water. I know, don't click past this. Is what everybody talks about food and water. There's more good stuff after this. But let's talk about it real quick in case you're kind of new to this. We look at the very essentials. One gallon of water per person per day, bare minimums. And take it from me, we live up here in the middle of nowhere, Michigan, and we've lost power for weeks at a time. And when we go to the one gallon per person per day, oh my gosh, it's like really bare minimums. I always say a couple gallons. I really say if you get a 55-gallon blue drum, I'll link one below if you want to pick one up, one of those water jugs, those 55-gallon ones per person per month is, is more reasonable. But understand, if you're really talking about crap hitting the fan and you're really out working and really sweating and all these other things, in the military, we would sometimes consume up to, and I don't recommend this unless you really are, you know, check with your doctor, like upwards of like four or five gallons a day sometimes. I mean, it was pretty rare. But that would happen, especially if you're continuously hiking for miles and miles, you sweat a lot and you have to replenish that water. There's no way one gallon a day would make that happen. What's going to happen when crap hits the fan and you're working outside gardening and hauling wood and everything else? It's One gallon's not going to cut it. Just keep that in mind. So obviously having a way, we'll talk more about this too, is have purification, a way to replenish your water rather than just storing your water. Same thing goes with, with food. I always say, not just a wide variety of food, I mean, having a culinary variety of different flavors and taste is actually a lot better than you think it is. And we'll show you this in a minute in the video too, because understand that when you do have the same thing over and over again for possibly years, think about this, you know, having that variety really is a spice of life. You'll, you'll be like, what am I even doing this for when it's nothing but rice and beans every single day? or possibly some canned food, et cetera. I have a wide variety, but it's not even just a variety of foods, but a variety of ways of food storage, you know, because rice and beans store amazingly well. That's great. I have lots of canned food. I have lots of potatoes. You can go down the, the freeze dried area. I mean, we have a lot of freeze dried food too. It does get kind of pricey, but it has its place. It's very important to have these kind of things. I mean, for us, for freeze dried food, the majority we have is American Reserves. It's one of our sponsors. So if you haven't checked that out, look in the link below and check them out. And they're actually having a sale right now, by the way, going up toward the end of this month where you can get some of the freeze-dried food at a discounted price, which is who doesn't want a sale. But having a wide variety is important. And of course, the most important thing when it comes to food is don't stockpile foods you don't like. Well, I'm going to be better and start eating more asparagus. I mean, asparagus is amazing. Don't stockpile asparagus because it's just simply going to make the apocalypse even more miserable. Number two, develop survival skills. And in reality, I should put this as number one. Now, I put food and water as number one because in the mindset of most preppers, by the way, that's what they think is food and water. In fact, they think that's all it is, food and water. It is not. Even more than food, more important than food and water sometimes is simply your survival skills. Because you cannot simply just be an armchair, lazy boy, recliner, apocalyptic prepper. It doesn't work that way. This is not a spectator sport. You need to actively participate and prepare and drill and train. And there's so many things you could do. I mean, at the very least, even just functioning without power. Do you have a solar generator? I mean, granted, they're not just for, oh, I can watch TV now, but they'll keep your fridge and freezer going, give you a little bit of light or possibly even a fan on a warm days. But you need to work on making fires. Are you proficient at that? With my kids, every time we go out, we I actually have like a little lesson, teach them how to make fires. And then every time we start a fire, it's up to them to practice it. How about water purification? You don't even necessarily need a water filter, by the way, but there's ways to replenish that. But water filters make it much easier. Get a whole bunch of it. Have you done that before? Self-sufficiency. Gardening, foraging, hunting, fishing. The list goes on and on because, yeah, I've got some food stockpiled. But when you continuously replenish your food by either making your own or hunting varmint out in the woods, it helps out drastically. Self-defense and being in shape for that. Because you could have all the preps in the world. I've got tons of stuff. But as soon as you say, oh, no, I've got tons of stuff, they're going to come in and take it unless you know how to protect you and your family. I mean, if you don't have stuff, they're going to try to come in and take whatever you have. Of course, we have to look at sanitation. What do you do with all the extra stuff that you don't want anymore? Because it can cause disease if it sticks around. Communication. You want to be able to communicate with friends and family or even your community. And that's one of the ones too. You really need to have a community. And this, I mean, look, I talked about this in like two minutes, all these different things. There's more, but that's why we have Goshen prepping. That is like the meat and potatoes 
you know, metaphorically speaking, of this channel is trying to look at the broad umbrella of all the things you need to prepare for and train for. So if you haven't gone through the videos, that's what Goshen Prepping, Prepping is all about. Go through the videos and practice all these at home. Don't just watch these videos. You need to practice them yourself. Number three, develop a disaster plan. You need to plan. Plan is the key. And you need to look at all possible situations. Now, there's so many of them. And actually, I'll make it easier on you. There's a good plug for my newsletter. If you look in the description below, you can click on the newsletter. Just put your email in there. And you can always unsubscribe later. It's no big deal. I'll never sell your information. But we put the newsletter out practically every Sunday. But guess what? If you sign up for the newsletter, you know, just click on the website and go to it, I will automatically email you, or I guess it's like ready to print off right there or save it, all the different possible things you could need to prep for. And there's lots of them. I mean, granted, some of them are more for your area. Like up here in Michigan, I don't usually have to worry about hurricanes so much. But, you know, down south, they don't have to worry about snowstorms as much. I really stress the words as much, by the way, obviously. But you have to look at all the different types of disaster plans. What are you going to do? Are you going Are you going to bug out? I mean, a lot of people, including myself, I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. But if my house is about to burn down, sure, I'm going to go somewhere. Where are you going to go? Who's going with you? When are you going to leave? How are you going to contact your community? How are you going to pick a meeting spot? And you need to look at X, Y, and Z and contingency plans and plan Bs, all these, because you know what? It's one of those things where if you've been planning something out, have the idea that, you know what, there's something in the plan is not going to work. So you have to be adaptable, adaptable as well. Number four, plan with your family. And that term family, I use very loosely. It may not be blood relatives. That doesn't really matter. But whoever you're with, you have to look at this or possibly who you might be with because there's nothing like a disaster to have all those family members coming to your house and wanting your stash because, you know, word gets around that you're kind of a prepper. I know it is in my community, even like where I go to martial arts, people are like, oh, when I kind of come to your house and learn to practice some of these skills? I'm like, how do you even know this? All right, so you need to worry about making plans for the entire household, especially kids too, by the way. If you have kids, young kids, get them involved. I mean, don't put the scare parts in there like, hey, guys, we may have to worry about that. Don't do that. But practice, they love doing this kind of stuff. Get them their own little backpack and put stuff in their backpack, even if you have a couple toys in there at the very least. But we always teach our kids. We All of our kids have backpacks from the oldest to the youngest. Well, our baby doesn't. But have backpacks, and that way they contribute and help carry some of the stuff in case you need to go somewhere. And it's just fun. The kids love to get involved, and they really enjoy that kind of stuff. But maybe you have like an elderly parent in your house. What are you going to do about that situation? Or everybody has that crazy Aunt Martha, you know, that person who is going to kind of show up at your door. Or... Or better yet, the good-for-nothing brother-in-law. You know, that guy who basically mooches off everybody and he knows you've got a few extra cans of corned beef hash and crap, it's the man he's coming to your house. What are you going to do? Are you going to shoo away Aunt Martha or the brother-in-law? By the way, your pets are family too. That's something else you need to keep in mind too. Now, I, when crap hits the fan, by the way, in all these countries we've seen in the past, people will often take their animals and let them go. I don't recommend that at all. They really do play a vital role for numerous ways. Dogs obviously help provide security. Dogs and cats, or maybe in your little hamster, um, all make you feel more relaxed, you know, having an animal there. That, and that's what we're going to get in the last part in a second. You really want to make sure you stay relaxed with this stuff. And those animals at the very least play those parts. And they really don't eat as much as you think they do. Still prep and prepare for them, but they can eat a lot of the scraps and everything that you have leftovers. But other plans you may include may be your bug out bag or what do you can do if there's a security breach? What do you do if your Aunt Martha does come by? Everybody has a job no matter what. If you want to take Aunt Martha in, fine. But you know, this is not a free ride, Aunt Martha. Brother-in-law, I know you don't want to work a job, but here you will. And you make it very clear, these are your jobs. If you don't do these jobs, out you go. But if you do, you've earned a can of GMO corn every single day. Drills and scenarios, not just with you, but with potential people coming to your house as well. And number five, your well-being. This is one of the most overlooked areas in preparedness. Your well-being is so vitally important because if your well-being goes, we're talking about either physical or mental, your prepping is out the window. Think about that. So it's often overlooked. You want to make sure that you have a place to rest in your recliner, but you also want to make sure that that's the only place you have to rest and you're going to basically be one of those spectator preppers again. You want to be able to rest and relax. That's true. But you have to be able to participate and interact. You have to be able to do things. You have to be able to drill and train because when that time comes, you know, you'll never know that you can do it until you drill and train. And in martial arts, people always say practice makes perfect. No, I always tell my students, practice does not make perfect, especially when you're doing certain like 
hits or punches or kicks. No, perfect practice makes perfect. And they always try to rush through it. Don't rush through this stuff. Take your time with your training. Take your time with the drills. Take your time really looking at how to do these things because perfect practice makes perfect. Because understand, when this happens, it's going to be very physically demanding and you may actually have to really react fast as well. And the only way to react fast is you've been training and drilling with these over time. Not to mention physical hygiene is important. You have to be able to worry about getting rid of waste products, all those things, because you don't want that building up in your house. It will completely start messing with you, mind. And that's where you get into mentally things too. You have to understand that if you don't train, you're not gonna react, at least appropriately. Fatigue, stress over time, that's actually often a killer. And when we see like times when a country invades and the people in the country are there, they know that doing guerrilla warfare will continuously not beat them militarily, but it's going to put such a mental strain on the, the invader that eventually their spirits start crumbling and then they can be overcome. This has been proven over and over time again. So you need to continuously prepare for that stress yourself. You need to be ready for this. And of course, training ahead of time is good, but you also have to look at like entertainment. I know this is so weird, but in the military, when I went off into combat, the first thing that I, that I looked at was they would, give, they would give us things like, you know, here's some extra beer. They would give, I was like, beer here? Or here's a new game or a deck of cards or we're going to watch a movie back in the VCR days. I was like, movie? I always envisioned combat was you're constantly on the go combat. And I was like, why all this relaxation? You have to have the relaxation. You have to unwind. So especially in your area, your house, what are you going to do to unwind? You have to have, even if it's just crafts, even if it's just some kind of meaningless entertainment, have something. Do not overlook this area because your mental fatigue is the problem. Especially if you're isolated, you will literally go bonkers. So obviously there's more, more of these than just these five things, guys, but five things really to focus on. And if you do have more, by all means, put them in the comments below or tell a story how these things actually have helped you out. And of course, continue going through growth and prepping too, because we have lots of videos that help you with all these things to prepare for that time when it may come, including this video right here. Thanks for watching.